Hey up James man, you alright? You alright Phil? How are we doing people? <clears throat> yeah, it's that time of the season when, you know, we're all doing little lives of all of our plants, so I thought I'd get involved and just sort of show you mine. I haven't shown you for a while well, since David filmed my backside coming out of the tunnel a couple of weeks ago. I haven't filmed anything, so yeah, I thought I'd give you a little little look around. Right, so let's let's switch over. Right, so this is this is the allotment where I grow. Hello, mate. How you doing? You alright, Phil? So this is you've probably seen this with me and David a few times before. That this is the allotment where I grow a few of the chilies for some of the stuff that we do. Got hot pods. There's Barney's plot next door. You can see he's growing dirt and he's growing blackout material. So he's doing pretty well there. Um, Mark's allotment is Mark Thomas's allotment is just over there. You can see he's got the green ass. Now I'll show you a little secret about Mark's allotment while he's not here. Let's have a look. I thought this was fascinating and I've never seen this before. Right, so here's Mark's water butt. Right, you see the water in there? There. Hello. Look at him, he keeps a fish in his water butt so that I think it's to clean the water or something or so he's got the fish poo that goes into his um, plants or whatever but yeah that's the idea is that he's I think he's had that fish in there for ages but yeah it eats all the algae and the bits and pieces that come down off his roof turns it into fish poo goes into his plants and that's how he wins all of his growing competitions so there you go that's his secret <coughs> you grew more grey than pods grey how do you mean? <coughs> yeah, that's it, Barney Robber, look at him. Blackout material and dirt with a little bit of weeds. <coughs> right, okay, so this is this is my tunnel, first one anyway. And you can see that like I've got quite a lot of greenery. It's filled up a fair bit. This in the middle was the bit where I was supposed to walk down and sort of yeah, water the plants. But um, that's not going to happen. Hey, Martin, how are you doing? You all right, mate? All right, so if we look in, first thing I always do when I come in, I've just arrived, so I haven't checked anything. So this is the first water pot reservoir. And this one feeds one, two, three, four plants, I think. So all of them, you know, you, you ask me this every time, all of the pods go into Jolt. So I, ta I take all of the stuff, all of the pods that I get, whack them all together. And yeah, that's what goes into Jolt and pretty much all of the sources, to be honest. Hey, Amit, how you doing? Good to see you, buddy. You all right? Right, so I'm going to have to get down and show you. You can see there's my mare's tail lawn that I'm busy growing just behind me there. Okay, so I will do my best to... Ow! Ow, that chip. Right, so let's have a look. First one, Jay's Peach. So you can see it's looking a little bit battered. There's like one pod. You can see that there's a few pods coming at the top there. It's nothing to go. Oh no, there's a few there, look. It is looking a bit better. There's a few, so that's not too bad. So that's a Jay's peach. Now they don't look anything like the Jay's peaches that I grew last year, which were a little bit more ghost looking. They've got more of the sort of the scorpion bit that sort of goes in then back out again. So probably mixed with something, but I'm sure they'll be hot on the same. Right, this one is, is there any? Ah, there we go. This one is, Gum times chocolate. So this is something off Gary Anson. Um, you can see there that basically it's at, the, it's at the initial stage where it's got loads and loads of flowers on, but not loads and loads of pods. They're all little ones. And the danger is at this sort of stage is if you have too many pla too many flowers, that I mean, all the pods turn to runts, which is not what we want. So it's important to yeah keep the feed at an optimum level at this stage, or you end up with a plant full of runts. Okay, let me just stand up again because this plant this is i think everybody every season has one plant that's like miles ahead of all of the rest 
and I think it must be this one for me this season. So this is purple Naga Viper Brain and you can see, look at that, there's like, it is raining pods in this and they are big. There is no messing around. You, at the top here you've got a few smaller ones. But down the bottom, you can see if I can get you in a bit more as well. It's all the way around and it's just absolutely dripping. Now that's that's the one originally, I think, first person that... Look at the tails on that one. Look at that. And look at that. But I think originally I got the seeds off Cliff Hislop. For that one, he was the first person that I saw the um, the Narca Viper brain off. Okay, let's get a little bit more in. So this one is my favourite plant from last year, Red Tiger Gum Mamp. And you can see that we're starting to get a few pods. This one took ages last year and then all went at one time. Um, how hot are these? Do you mean the Purple Narca Viper brain or the Tiger Gum Mamp, Phil? I mean, they're both pretty hot. Well, so we'll move in a little bit more. This is purple striped butt wrecker. So you can see here on the same plant, we're getting some purple pods, greeny purple pods. And then as they go down, they're getting more sort of red and orange. I've never grown this one before, but you can see it's getting quite a few on, so it looks pretty good. Um, <clears throat> I think Gary has got like quite a few sort of weird crosses. Purple Naga Viper Brain, how hot is that? I mean, I think when we did the online chili eating competition last year, I think it was like round 10 or 11 out of um, 12, so it was seriously hot. But Martin Fogg, if you're still on, you can tell him how hot the Purple Naga Viper Brain is. Right, this one is a seven pot primo, so you can see there, there's a few, a little bit behind, lots of flowers, again, so pretty good. Then over here, we have, I'm sorry for whacking the camera all over the place, but I'm trying to sort of crawl and kneel down and show you. This is a Fatali, haven't grown Fatali in quite a long time, got the seeds off from Cornish chilies from the Fatali that I got from the chili ink competition last year and you can see they look pretty good <laughs> yeah crushed glass so yeah there's the answer to your question Phil they're um they're not too bad all right I'm just gonna get in it here oh and for anybody who hasn't seen them you can see this is what the water pots do they basically have a reservoir that fills these little bits here with water and as the plant drinks it it just feeds it off the um off the pipe they are pretty effective yeah just that's the purple naga viper brain so this is purple reaper from ben white so you can see there's not much light in here to show you but if i sort of hover up you can see these i don't need to look at the things they are Let's see if I can get it where there's a bit more light. There. Can you see these? These are caramel scorpions. My Fatali failed to germinate this year. Hey James, how you doing? Yeah, I've, I've had Fatali a few times and tried to germinate them. And you're right, I've found it difficult to... Um, hi Stephen, what size tunnel are you using? I think this one is 10 metres by 4 metres. This one. There you go. There's a couple more caramel scorpion. For you, one of my favourites. They're looking pretty illuminous at the moment, and considering they've got to go caramel, it might well be that they there's some sort of pheno or something. Yeah, but anyway, there we go. Let's get back out this hole. Okay, and go back into this hole. Oh, right. So over here we have Bohemian goat. This is my favourite chilli, Bohemian Goat. You can see that they look pretty good. The phenos are pretty good. There's a decent sized one to show you. So you can see they've got that sort of, they're about Scotch Bonnet heat, Scotch Bonnet Habanero, 
but they've got that sort of orangey, fruity sort of taste about them, which is why they're my favourite. So if, if anybody hasn't grown Bohemian Gold before, I would definitely recommend doing so. Right, this one, now you can see this Autopot tank bust, so I've been having to do them by hand, and you can see just from the state of the plant, it looks a bit dry. And it's at that stage where the pods, and Madame Jeanette, never grown this before, but it's at that stage where the pods are all coming and it really needs a good amount of water. So yeah, I'll be getting on and watering this as soon as I finish doing this. <laughs> right, next one. If I can find... No, I can't find, I don't know what this is, but it's something. <laughs> That's about as good as I can say. But yeah, you can see, again, pods are good. I think I'm going to try and grow those and KSLS next year. Yeah, I mean, I haven't grown the KL, KSLS. If the, is that the Starkist one? I've never grown that before, and I'd like to. But if anybody hasn't grown the Bohemian Goat, get on it, because it is amazing. Okay. Next one. Trinidad Perfume Peach. So this one is a no heat one. You can see it always, it did this last year, it grew massive and then it started podding at the end. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that that one should be okay. In the middle here, we have Rich Ingham's Cyril. So these ones are a cross between, um, cross between an Ahi Lemon and a Dorset Naga. So these are like proper fruity, but they've got that ahi taste. Tried to grow a Bohemian Goat this year, turned into something else. Yeah, that's the problem that you get. You never, you know, you never know what you're gonna get with if the seeds have crossbred or whatever, but I guess, yeah, if you plant a few of them and you just go for the one that looks like it. Got three Madame Jeanette and hopefully they'll be half as good as yours. Um, well, it's looking a bit dry, to be honest, mate. It's not, you know, it's got a lot of flowers and a lot of pods. I've never grown it before. Um, a lot of people sort of use it instead of the ahi lemon, the Madame Jeanette. But, yeah, we'll have to see with that one. Okay. Going over here. Do you know what? I'm not even sure that one, which that one is. And I can't get down to get the labels. So we're just going to have to not know with that one. Right, there you go, so that is the first half of the big polytunnel. So instead of going down the middle now, I've had to open up the other end so that we can see what we're doing. Have you considered upgrading to the new aqua valve? Um, do you know, Sean, I've, I've got 14 of my plants on the auto pots and I was lucky enough to get them for free from the auto pot showroom when they um, got all new kit. So really about 45 of my plants are all just grown in pots with um, soil and just as you see here, just in trays. So the way I look at it really is the 14 that I've got with auto pots are just a bonus. And the ones that I have that are not in the water, water pots, yeah, that's how I've always traditionally grown it. I would like to upgrade to the aqua valve, but I would need 45 pots, which is going to be quite an outlay. So, yeah, I would consider it, but probably won't at the moment. Right, so this one is the one that I damaged. And I don't know if you ever saw a video that I did before. Are these in the comp this year? If you mean the chili eating comp, I haven't decided yet. Um, I'm probably going to do that in October when um, there's a decent amount of chilies all ripe. So I dare say some of these will be in the comp and I'll open it up to anybody else who's got anything good at the time to submit, you know, 10, 20 pods or whatever and, and sort of, you know, be in charge of one of the rounds if you like. So yes, I, I dare say a lot of them in the comp will be from here. But, you know, I think last year at least five rounds are from other people. So... Okay, so yeah, so this plant that I've massacred, um, if you remember seeing it, our, like the main stem came off and the secondary main stem came off. So all we were left with was this. And you can see the damage on the main stump there at the bottom. And yeah, it's, it's left itself a bit late, to be honest, and it's probably not gonna do much. And I was gonna replace this, but I haven't got anything small enough to put in that gap. 
So it's just going to have to sit there and do its thing, and if it produces, it produces. I can't even remember what it was. I think it was something pretty good, like a Burmese Naga or something. Yeah, Burmese Naga. Which is a shame, because that's, and again, one of my favourites that's been lost, but that's how it goes. Right, this one is... That's the thing, you see, from water in these type of pots, you end up the name tag gets lost. This is another red tiger gum mamp. So I think I indulged myself with two or three of my favourite ones last year, and I kept two or three plants of these. So again, it's similar to the one at the start of the tunnel. Yeah, it's got to the stage where it's got all the pods on. Right, now we've got a few ahis, standard ahi lemon. And you can see that, yeah, it's gone pretty crazy. Neat drinking a lot of water. This tray yesterday, you can see where the water level is here now. This tray was full at lunchtime yesterday. So it's pretty much drank, I don't know, a whole watering can, maybe a bit more, between this plant and this one. This one at the back is still at the bit where it's flowering and it's got a few pods, so that will not be drinking. It'll all be the ahi that's, that's drinking the main amount of water there. Okay. Right. So this one is um, Brazilian starfish. Always grows absolutely massive, like seven foot tall, and waits all the way till the end of the season to start putting out pods. But I say that, it has got one or two on at the moment and you can i mean the plant's a bit weird if you look at some of the leaves they're a bit like like this one like dis, sort of distorted and it's been like this since it was a young seed and it was the same last year but it didn't seem to affect it doing the pods okay this this one <coughs> first time i've been growing it thunder mountain longhorn ahi are similar to lemon drop uh, Ahi is a type of, um, it's pretty much a sort of a species of chilli. <coughs> yeah, I'll eat one at least, don't worry. <coughs> so ahi is like, um, you get ahi fantasy, ahi lemon, um, loads of different types. Brazilian starfish is an ahi as well. Um, but it's got a really unique taste. Um, they're different to any of the other families. So look at, look at these. Sometimes called, I think, spaghetti. You sometimes get it cool, but look at the length of some of these. That's not even a particular long one. That's more of a long one. And you can see it looks like something out the Amazon rainforest with the amount of pods that that's got on. Yeah, the starfish was one of the best pods from last year, I'll agree. Definitely. I think, <coughs> I, think I, I tried a few of those and they were just so tasty. Right, now I'm not going to be able to... Am I going to be able to get down to the... Yep. Okay, bubblegum purple ghost scorpion orange. So I think somebody has got a bit funky with the crosses here and crossed about a million different ones. But if you look at the leaves, leaves are proper nice. It's like purple veins through the, the leaf. And that, that's not just a deficiency. <coughs> that's like how the, um, it's just how it's growing. But you can see, look, we've got the calaxes from the bubblegum, but were purple. I did, I think I saw some, there's some runts at the front, and there's a few more runts as we get in. Yeah, so, ah, there we go. There's a few more there. So you can see it's starting to, it's starting to put a few pods out that are ripe. They're still quite small, but, you know, it's looking not too bad. I think this one's Body Snatcher. In the middle here you can tell that the pods are sort of a bit ahi lemon looking but always a lot bigger and usually with the sort of ahi fantasy traits towards the bottom like that yeah the calaxes are good in these if i mean you only really get the bleeding once you get to the, the fully ripe pods but let me just pull that off you can see there that the calax from the chili it's got this sort of the calax is like a hat on top of the chili, which is different from normal. And then you've got the colour of the chili that bleeds into the, you know, the calax. And if you take it off, you can see that it's actually taken the colour from the chili and put it into the the stalk, which is pretty weird. But you know, it's 
obviously makes it one of the nicest looking ones. I'll just pop that in my pocket for later. Right, so down we go again. So this is the second tank. You can see there that's about a third down, so nothing to worry about. But then if we go over to these, you can see we're starting to get, and we've got a ripe one in there, a couple of ripe ones at the back. And you can see we've got, yeah, let's see what it is. Yeah. Right, so this is an Armageddon from Edible Ornamentals. So this is um, one of the ones that Sean sent for the Chile eating competition last year. And in my opinion, was one of the best looking sort of Armageddon's out of them. Now I could, I could eat it, but then that would be the end of the video, yeah? And I've still got the second tunnel to show you. So I, w I will have a little bite to see what they're like, but let me at least finish this before we do that, yeah? Okay, so that's it, that's it for this one. Um, I don't think really you could fit much else in here. There's probably a couple that I haven't shown you, but there you go, I probably can't get to them. <laughs> hey Chris, man, you all right? Right, so, second tunnel, out of like three. Has anyone tried to grow a Dracula chili before? Do you mean a vampire chili? Um, I've grown vampires before, and they're sort of little stumpy. They look like sort of Apaches, purple. Um, they're all right, you know. The flavour was just all right. Nothing right on about. Right, so this, first one. Purple butt wrecker. And you can see it's got got a couple of pods on there. Quite nice looking. Something like Ghostbusters, that one. That's really weird. It's got the purple. Yeah, you would you would eat it and do it through the thing, whereas I'll do it and I'll be just lying on the floor with the camera just in <coughs> pain. Right, there you go, you can see this next one. Armageddon and this is the Armageddon from the original chug so it's the one that we got from Love Chilies and a completely different pheno from the one we got from Edible Ornamentals so yeah I thought I'd grow a few different types of Armageddon this season just going round we've got Jalapeno de Guitos you can see there they've got the cork in I can't actually get near it to show you too much but and there's the one that's been eaten already but look at the cork in on that you know, they grow to a fair size, quite bell-shaped. <coughs> but yeah, they look brilliant. This is another Trinidad Perfume Peach, because I really need the pods this year. And you can see we're starting to get some decent pods on this one. You can't really buy the Trinidad Perfume Peach from anywhere, so there's a certain few chilies that I've got to try and make sure that I grow and get a decent crop. All right. Let's try and go down. Go down or not? Um, hmm. Let's see if I can read that. Right, that's a habanada. Phil, that's my habanada. That's how it looks. You can see a few um, at the back there. But in the, in the corner there, that's a serrano. And I don't know how I'm going to get to that. But yeah, last year I had a serrano plant that just got diseased and died. But this one looks pretty good this year. Do love a serrano. Love the way that it's got the furry, furry stems. A little bit like ricotta. Yeah. Okay, next one. So this is a reaper. Now anybody who's ever seen a reaper before will tell you that they don't really look like reapers. I don't know exactly what they are. Just some sort of cross, reaper cross bit weird but yeah hopefully as hot as a reaper this is a katie so uk's i think it's still the uk's hottest or maybe that's gone to the armageddon now but yeah these are katie's always always produces out of everything that i've got the biggest leaves absolutely massive your other habanada plants fine zero heat just the one that looks similar to your t yeah to be honest with you i think you know the one that you've grown that looks like the red tiger gum mamp, that's an interesting one, that one. It looks like proper productive, and the chilies look really good. So I'll possibly want some seeds back off that one from you. 
<laughs> I was behind everybody else, honestly. Bohemian goat again. You can see nothing's ripe in there, but yeah, it's another one and it's got pods, it's doing what it should. Right, so now I have a problem with this plant. Um, now look at this. Can you see here? It's doing a bit of this. Now I'm not sure if I have overfed it or what I've done, but it's on a couple of plants around here and it is getting better, but it looks almost like blight, even though chili plants don't get really blight. So I'm not sure what's happened, but yeah, I've had to cut off, um, I've had to cut off a few stems just because it looks a bit weird. I can't, I can't even get in to see what plant it is, but <clears throat> yeah, cheers, Phil. I'll have them off you. <coughs> right, then we have, I uh, know this one, traditional Scotch bonnet. There you go. So just normal Scotch bonnets. Another plant that I wrecked at the front, but this one seems to be bouncing back a little bit. That's a nice looking pod, isn't it? Look at that. What's this? Purple Naga Viper Brain. So I think the seeds that I've used this year must have been, I mean, this, this plant, oh, look at that. That's annoying that because this branch is sticking so far out that it looks like it's ready to snap. But you can see that this plant is productive as well. So I think just the genes of the Purple Naga Viper Brain seeds I've used this year must, must have been really, really good. <sighs> Get off. Right, and then we have, lastly to show you, this is plant from Pavlava. I'll never get this right, but it's a Pavlava, I think, from Mark. And it's the chili that is used in kebab shops. So that looks a bit rubbish. Now this is actually fairly hot. It's difficult to point the camera and look at the same time, isn't it? But yeah, let's get one off. There you go. So normally you get them lime green, but in this case, it's turned red. And you can see beautiful looking chili. Now I'll have a bite of this one because I know that they're hot, but not too stupid hot. That's a lovely one. I'll have a little go of this one. <laughs> oh, that, that is serious, that is seriously hot, oh, and I don't eat a lot of sort of these chilies, oh my god, that is so hot, I'm going to dump that one and go back to the red one I think, right, so there we go, Oh, that's so hot. I tried it at least, anyway. So there we go, guys. Cheers for indulging me to, yeah, just show you a few of the bits and pieces that I've got going on. That's two out of three tunnels. So, yeah, I don't know if any of you are at Hot Sauce Society this weekend. Um, me and David are going to be there. I think um, Stephen Gibbs at Plot 34A. Yeah. James, it is that honestly, that is so hot. That one, what was it? That bubblegum scorpion ghost wrecker thing, really hot. That'll be in that. Oh, it's making my chest hurt. That would probably um, be like a round six, round seven out of ten. It was that hot, yeah. Dean, Dean Sharp as well from Dean the Dead is there. Um, Howl at the Moon Hot Sauce is there. There's like 45 producers. So if anybody's in London over the weekend. Get yourself down to Hot Sauce Society and we'll see you. But anyway, yeah, cheers for coming on the tour. Take it easy, man. Bye.